basic. No, because I saw it at the bottom and it was yeah. with one of these builders' um, website. Yeah, it seems to take a long time, but it's more comfortable there. Yeah. Um, Very well yourself. Don't think so much. I've got a seat. good. Can't set up. I've changed the links. I'm going to go to the right one now. Yeah. 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 Evacuation procedure, in the event of a fire alarm, fire drill, or other emergency, please exit from the room by the exit doors indicated and assemble at the designated meeting point. Uh, filming and recording the meetings in line with the openness of local government for the regulation 2014. This meeting may well be, or in fact is, uh, filmed or recorded by the town council or members of the public. Item one, submissions from the public. No. Nope. Okay. Item two, to receive any apologies for absence. I have apologies from councillors Roger Avenin, Franklin Arousselandry and Brian Hopkinson. Item three, declarations by members under the Local Government Act, 1972. It's a fact for me. So we will discuss the youth grant uh, to Beverly Stoke Youth Football Club. I got it listed on my uh, declaration for interest okay. already because my son is in the under 11. Okay. <laughs> so when we get to that point, you need to leave. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Item four, announced by the chair. I don't have any. Uh, I'm sorry, Andy. So, yeah, um, in the, on the back of declarations of interest, sorry, Sharon, but you've got CPM UK. It should be C M P U K. I think I changed it in the wording, but obviously. Yeah, in the wording, not there, yeah. Okay, thank you. Alright, everybody mm. happy? Uh, so item 4 announced by the chair, I don't have any. Item 5 is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of August 2019 as a correct record. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
that we, uh, as we've got some land from public in for uh, grant funding, we move Agenda 8 forward. Proposed. Proposed to Lane. Second to Tom, those in favour? Unanimous. Okay. okay. Item 8, deal with grant funding applications, 8.1 service level agreements at the Bradley Stoke Youth Football Club. Thank you. 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 Um, just, just you'll probably notice that we've left Martin at home tonight and um, to see some new faces um, from Bradley Stoke Youth. Wayne Dukes is our, our chairman, so just, uh, and I'm the secretary of Bradley Stoke Youth. I guess the, the service level agreement is the same as the last few years. Um, the, the money largely goes towards helping us run the football festival, which has been going for 12 or 13 years, and, and the school link program, which links into the festival. Um, all part of the, the Bradley State Community Festival. Uh, also helps us um, put lots of our coaches on their level one and level two courses, which is imperative for us. Um, so yeah, we, we very much um, welcome the money again this year to, to help us continue the work that's been going on at Bradley State Youth. Because they are doing a wonderful contribution. <coughs> and that's why you are here every, every year for our community festival, it's one of the important things. And I propose accepting. 2.3k, full amount. So Tom's proposing 2.3k, full amount. Thank you very much. Anybody at the second? But if there are any other discussions, then. Oh, I'll second that. Everybody happy? Yeah. Yeah, second in the lane. Those in favour of the service level agreement at 2.3k, Donald? Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for the yeah. wonderful work you've done in the community. It's very much appreciated. You're a part of finding a way down here, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I was playing this one, though. Well, that was. <laughs> 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 you just send me through bank account details? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll probably stick around with that, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. See you in the double message. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, 8.3.1 GA470 Community Restore in the back. I don't really need to say a lot, but I'd probably propose. Do they want to say anything? Just a thank you, really, for um, what your support last year. Um, I put some of our annual reports on, on your table, page 13. You can see the smiles on the kids' faces. We really appreciate your support as usual. So that's really, um, oh, your support this year would, would go a mile. You, you do actually put us, you do do a lot of them. You'll be to your annual every year. The summer ball, well, yeah. Okay. yeah, we missed you, really. <laughs> but we did have your support as yeah, well. So appreciate that. Absolutely brilliant. So I propose that we give the full amount. Okay, I'm very happy. Yeah, um, okay. But also, Thank you, thank you for the wonderful things that you are doing for the community and this overall whole. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So I propose delaying full amount, £500, wasn't it? Yeah. £500. Second, Tom, those in favour? Once again, unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Have a single place. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. And you can let me have bank account details as well. I will send that through tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs>
8.4. If you don't mind, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you then. 8.4 use Bronte. No. No. 8.5. Not Bronte. No. No. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. you. No. Where's two? Hi. Yeah, it's not great to on your agenda. Uh, item six to deal with any matters arising from the minutes of the meetings held on the 19th August 2019, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. 6.1, update on Brookway Activity Centre site development. Uh, work commenced today. Oh good, which will take about four weeks to complete. That's brilliant news. It is. It's been How long has it been going on for? Um, six years. Time. Yeah. Is it really six years? Because I was elected in October, the 10th of October 2013, and prior to my election, it was that was when we were going into the public consultation, and one of my first meetings was receiving the results of the public consultation at one of the committee meetings. Yeah. So it's been an ongoing saga for six years. So it's finally come to an end. Or it's yeah. to an end anyway. Well, that's good news. Anybody else have comments on that one? No. Yep. Yep. Little trans transportation so. <coughs> I've all found it. What's that? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, are we happy? Right, moving on. 6.2, update on provision of leisure equipment on the Jubilee Green. Over to you, my friend. Uh, last time, uh, it's in the minutes actually, if you want to refer back to the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, there's been not, not a lot of progress, but I'll give you the update since then. Uh, I've requested, uh, I was only chatting to Sharon earlier about this, on uh, numerous occasions from the people who gave the um, initial quote that you folks were quite interested in. Uh, that was very much the sort of uh, the street worker calisthenics type thing. I asked for a more detailed quote involving um, some additional equipment in lines with the conversation that we had here. And I'm still awaiting the <laughs> additional information on that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're waiting for on that one. Uh, this sort of, if, if I talk about the, the, the MUGA as well at the same time, if that's alright, because I've been um, just reaffirming with Sport England the most appropriate, who would be one of the most appropriate funding bodies possibly for this, uh, and the Community Asset Fund is one that they have mentioned. Um, just to remind you that uh, because we made a, a significant amount of saving on the installation of the shelter, we've now got potentially up to sort of eleven, twelve thousand pounds to pump prime for two projects. Uh, but just from some initial chats with Sport England, I, I was actually thinking of Marcus, actually you over there, I hate to get you involved, you thought you were going to get away. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just wondering how, how much, if at all, organisations like your own might be quite interested in sort of those possible developments of a, of a freely accessible multi-use games area, the idea being Children and young people, people with families, have somewhere where they can go and have a kick around, play basketball. Um, yeah, because I know certainly from the people I work with. So maybe in terms of uh, when we do actually submit a bid to the community asset fund or similar, if we have more data on people within the community who would support such a development, that would certainly strengthen. The bid, just something for you to. Uh, yeah. you, you're thinking that groups of the, the football um, ages of the football group using it to support it. Yeah, well, the idea is it would be a freely accessible community yeah. resource, so it would be. So, I think I think there's definitely potential there for the older age groups to yeah. be, be interested in using it, and you know, if it's freely accessible, the. Coaches can organise different training sessions, for example, around the equipment rather than just on a on a field or whatever. So I think yeah, yeah. there's definitely uh, opportunities there. Yeah, for the older age groups. I think it's like yeah. Some kind of well, there's two things. There's the, the mugger and there's the fitness area. So yeah. they mm -hmm. well, the thought they yeah because yeah. they obviously there are ideas want. that sort of come from. Um, part of the local community, but you know, it's something that may be of benefit for uh, yeah. wider usage potentially. Yeah. So it's something we could possibly have a chat about yeah. sometime. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just, yeah. 
So that's sort of that's sort of where we are with both those proposals. Really, that's just a sort of brief update. Uh, not a great deal has happened. Just checked out some funding and awaiting further quotes. Okay. So item six point three covered in six point two. Deepfield Primary School recently completed the yoga holiday in the yeah. school. It is a big of success. You know, I've been there. Um, and uh, also, can we, as I mentioned in one of the previous meetings, the possibility of having a swing somewhere if possible on there because new people are. That was agreed yeah. at strategic planning, and we'll be looking into that in due course. So that, yeah, that's that, that was on the last agenda, wasn't that? Yeah. So I remember right, so that's going through, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, item 7, 7.1, 7 Youth Development Participation Worker Update by Graham Baker. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're here. You're I'm glad you're here. Yes, you've had the report tabled. Uh, as usual, I've tried to sort of um, put a little bit of the, the, the top points in like a, a, a briefer summary. Um, regular youth work sessions throughout the summer. Um, I didn't actually have a, uh, because I was doing lots of work on my, not that you need to know this, but I was having lots of long weekends as opposed to uh, a two week block. So that actually meant that the regular fixed sessions throughout the holiday actually continued throughout all the weeks of the holiday. Because, uh, um, you know, I was taking the weekends sort of around, around those. So that meant that we delivered the regular sessions at the skate park and over here and the other stuff throughout the summer holiday as well as the additional sessions as and when weather was good. Uh, we've been on, um, I think there's one trip in the end uh, since the last report, that was um, a girls project trip. The girls project since we've gone back to the first week back, I must admit my heart dropped when there was only about seven young people turned up but since then we have had 20 at least around yeah pretty much 20 teenage girls every week since and i think that for a, a girls only project that is really good that's very Could good numbers that? with those 20 which schools do they mostly go to it's a bit of a mix actually that's mostly bradley stoke community school but okay. we do get uh, we have some of the older girls are at sgs uh, we have some a uh, couple from abbey wood um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's mainly both the Stoke Community School. Okay. <clears throat> uh, youth Voice Democracy, as, as we know, we always try to have that as a, a strong strand within our work. Um, sadly, uh, because this was an area in a previous authority I used to dedicate a fair chunk of my time to, uh, was the UK Youth Parliament and working with schools around uh, facilitating that. South Goss Council, though, a few years ago, decided to exit from UK Youth Parliament. So we're one of the few counties that made that decision not to engage in that project. Uh, why? County why? Sorry? Do you know why? Money, I think. But this I brought up a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, when yeah, I, yeah. When I said to you yeah. about who you wanted, and then you said that you were looking into it, then, then you said the can't. No, you can't. You can't. Off. You can't because do it, no, no yeah. it's not done in, because exactly. uh, of the project I used to work for, we yeah. supported all the UK Youth Parliament elections in all the schools. Yeah, because we had quite a big discussion Somerset. in one of, yeah, the, one yeah. of the, the meetings, didn't we? Yeah. However, um, South Gloss does still have a um, sort of a, a, a youth democracy worker. Uh, and th this exercise, I've got a few things, I've just... Um, I think it's still nice to try and involve local young people. Yeah. There's a thing called, when UK Youth Parliament had their annual conference in August, they, the young people there decide on a, a range of issues that they think is important to that group of young people who have been elected from the various local schools within local authorities around the country. They then put that out to like a sort of a ballot um, of young people in schools and youth groups, etc. So this was us as Bradley Stoke Youth Work 
Ballistow Town Council then go into young people and asking them from that short list of issues what is important to them. Uh, and that was our responses. I got responses from 31 young people, um, which apparently was very high actually within South Cross. <laughs> across the... Do you have a copy of it? Yeah, yeah, you can, because there's, there's, there's no secret information on that, you can have a copy. I've got another, oh, there's not a spare one. Um, so what happens now is that the deadline was last Wednesday, lunchtime, so all that's now gone. The, the people who, uh, it's the British Youth Council who now uh, run the UK Youth Parliament, uh, so that then goes back and um, used to be a very exciting part of my work when I was in Bath and North East Somerset. We'd then support our, the young people who were part of the Youth Parliament and we take over, you take over the House of Commons once a year. Yeah. It's the only time anyone who is not an elected MP is allowed to sit on the green benches. And uh, you have uh, Speaker Burko chairs the debate and we're in the, November. The annual conference is in August, but this, this is coming up. So these issues that the young people have voted on are then compiled nationally, and then they decide through the debates in the Commons in November which item they're going to campaign on as a youth parliament the following, the fo the following year. So yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a way of getting young people involved in those debates. Quite interestingly, though, one of the, um, the, the sort of local section, and this came up, um, that's why there's only six there, not that it's not important, but this came up from a discussion with a group, group of girls the night before I had to submit the results. And they raised the whole thing about sort of uh, resources in schools and the whole sort of sh student support uh, and the lack of or what they felt was a lack of support for students within schools, particularly around mental health and sort of that then fed back to one of the other things that a lot of them identified because a lot of them wanted to vote for all these issues but then you're only meant to vote for one issue so they found it very difficult to choose an issue. I'm quite surprised about is that the tackle child poverty was the received the most votes in there? Uh, mental health received the most votes on, under that section. Oh no, tackle child property, you're right, yeah, it's 12, sorry. I thought yes, it so that's interesting um, that that is one before hate crime and mental health, child poverty is one of the issues that they're dealing with. Does I think it's something that, from my experience, most young people probably see, they, they see it within their peer groups. groups. <coughs> you, know, that they're, you know, people are <coughs> going hungry. Uh, okay. Food banks, like some of the young people who come to some of our sessions, when we've got food there, they just sort of appear, no matter what the weather is, and they're just straight in there making toast, food. And what that's like that's like that's like their evening meal is when they come to the session at the skate park, which and they're area? often not there all the time. They'll just come there, eat, and go. <laughs> so. Which areas are most of these young people from? Well, these are young people. That it, it, this is very sort of it's very much um, I, I wouldn't be able to tell from, from the girls' club. A lot of these was from the girls' project or from the skate park. From the girls' project, as I said earlier, predominantly Bradley Stone. From the skate park, it's uh, the two evenings I did stuff there. It's it's a mix. That's very interesting because so there, there's child poverty issues in our area. Well, if you think that the skate park is used by, yes, predominantly Bradley Stoke, but also we get a lot of young people from Patchway, some from Filton, those, mm. yeah, those areas there where obviously... But do you think that they could just be bringing, they see this on the news and they think, yeah, they probably have some within the schools that do go without food, but that is like a subject that's close to them, that they think we should have this, is it for children in this UK or is it for children in like Africa? Yeah, just a general no, this is devolved, just a general devolved topics. This is stuff that But yeah. it doesn't it doesn't yeah but it doesn't actually set state here, does it? 
Yeah, but it, it is by in, by the way it's what's implied in the way these are um, mm. categorised. You've got UK-wide topics, and you've got devolved top topics, which would be like Northern Ireland Assembly, the Welsh Assembly, mm. the Scottish Parliament, and that's what they've done it on. And you've got local topics, which is where people have put in yeah, their own things. Yeah, local and all that, but I think that's a mixture of local, UK, and also... No, I think it's all... That's what I... That's the thing it's, them, it's them, the people who need to have it explained to them is the people who are doing the voting, isn't it? So, not whether we can... You know, we can read the words and exactly. we can understand. Yeah. But they, that, they, that's they why you, you sort of, with, with some groups, for example, do, this process might have been uh, a 45 minute dis discussion. You know what I mean? They're long. Other ones, they just said, oh, yeah, that, let's have a look at that, that. And they might not have spent a great deal of time on it. But that's, that wasn't, you know, that's. Uh, but the way it's grouped, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. not that they picked child poverty over hate crime, it's actually in that category, yeah. things like the environment then, at the moment, are more prominent than other things on that list. Yeah, for example... And then you think of the backdrop of what would ha what's happening today, <coughs> those are the things at the forefront of people's minds, yeah. like the environment issues that everyone's it's campaigning because about. Because it's all in the media and things like that. Yeah, it, it's, it's like, th th that's why, for example, the, you know, the, un uh, the, section, uh, the, the, the fourth option under UK topics, uh, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, if I, so I would say working with a group of young people and we had a much more detailed discussion and they were asking, because I found it quite scary that a lot of young people have never been told about the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. You know, I would have thought that should be fundamental within certain parts of the school curriculum. But when they actually were told about what that meant, they then realised that they might have then switched something from the environment into that because they realised that if they had the powers granted to the voice of young people within that, they would be able to look at issues like the environment. You see what I mean? So that, that, that sort of almost subsumed the other issues because it gave them the voice to talk about them as opposed to just voting for the issue itself. Who so that did, the list of issues? These came from the annual conference of um, UK Youth Parliament. So these are young people that would have been elected in the elections earlier this year from all the different schools uh, and they would they would have had support workers working with them over a period of time that would have been and that, that's mainly through the British Youth Council now um, and that would have been at their annual conference that they came up with these this short list of issues which they then put out so I mean to get yeah. a feel and yeah. then that feedback. that sort of feedbacks on the <coughs> But yeah, I thought it was interesting to just sort of share that with you because this, this again is what I try to say about um, what we try to do within our work is we try to have this element within our work all the time, if possible. About I think having, having discussions that. like this within your work and say like if you have skate park or anything like that, I think that's good because you're getting the feedback from them yeah. on what they're feeling, what they want. And also, it's bringing uh, young people um, into politics as well, isn't it? You know, it's becoming interested in local issues and you know national issues and the politics behind it and all that sort of thing. So it's all yeah. good because and, it means that they'll. You know, and it's interesting you should say that because quite bizarrely, it's sort of uh, uh, we're not. You know, it, uh, I had an email today as I was putting these t this together for tonight. Uh, from another student at Bradley Stoke Community School who I don't know, or I'm not aware that I know them, I don't recognise the name, and they were requesting their school work experience next year, saying, yeah, I'm interested in youth work, but I'm also interested in politics. <laughs> and I thought, I'm 14 at the moment. They said their age was 14. But, that is, is like that. but that's the thing. You, they hear things, and we, we've had... Um, Two work experience placements every year for the past two years, which is yeah, and they've they've gone really really well, um, and we get positive feedback from the school as well in terms of how they see the quality of the experience as well as the, the fact that they're, they're just nearly going through and we're nearly just doing it. So yeah, so yeah, a bit of a, a bit of detail on that one. Anything else? Um, 
Yeah, I've, I've got here just above that, uh, I've got a young volunteer um, who, again, as part of the, um, the sort of, I keep calling it the sixth form, year 12, year 13, um, they have to do uh, weekly volunteering. Um, and because this uh, young woman actually had done her work experience with me, she's now come back and said, can I do some volunteering with you? But she's also um, a bit of a pioneer in female role model in, in terms of she's a very good uh, scooter rider and um, challenges the sort of gender domination at the skate park. And one of the things we did straight away in the volunteering was when we went to the youth festival, I was asked to help them out with their skate competition up in Thornbury. And her and her mum came along and she ended up doing all the judging. Uh, present, uh, she should be all over the Thornbury Gazette, I believe. She did all the presentations. She was the person that had... And it was amazing how uh, a 16-year-old girl was accepted by all the boys who entered the competitions as the person who was not only judging how good they were, but then handed out the book. So I thought that was in terms of uh, challenging gender stereotyping, it was an amazing little experience. There was no dissent, they all accepted Yeah, they all did, they... <laughs> <laughs> Which if you rewind a couple of years, um, she was feeling um, probably a little bit bullied within the skate park environment, and she initially only used to come when we had a presence there. And now she's like, you know, feels safe and confident in that space. And we would love to um, use her as a positive role model to sort of uh, take that a lot further. Mm. So that's one of the things we're looking to in the future when we get the place properly equipped is, like those guys over there, but in the skate park world, um, you know, mentors and coaches who can come along and do sessions to sort of skill people up and create a safe space within the environment for them to, 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 to learn and feel confident. Uh, yep, recruitment, we all know about that, but that's all been passed through committees now and I just need to get on and try and get some other people in place so we can um, start developing all the strands of work we talk about in the five-year plan. Um, yeah. Pretty much it, unless you've got any specific questions about anything else in the report. What any questions for Greg? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much indeed, Greg. Much yeah. appreciated. Sounds good. 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 Oh no, Brady still can believe 7.8. No, no update. No update. Eight is what we're done with. Which just leaves us with item 9 to agree the date and time of the next meeting, Monday the 16th of December 2019, 7 p.m. Yeah.